Hello there, my name is Quentin Russell and I am the Content Marketing Specialist here at Doc365. And today we're going to be looking at how an automated contract management system with added vendor management capabilities can uh, benefit your business. So before we get started, I wanted to take a quick look at our agenda for today. So first we're going to briefly go over who we are and what we do. Um, then we're going to define what an automated contract management system is. After that, we'll take a look at what features you should expect from an automated contract management system. And then from there, we'll go into different reasons why your company may need an automated CMS. Finally, we're going to take a look at specific benefits that you can uh, come to expect out of a CMS system. And then finally, we're going to wrap things up by taking a quick look at Doc365's contract management solution so that you can see what one looks like in action and kind of get a picture of what you should expect going forward. Uh, so really quick, again, I'd like to just ask that everyone make sure to mute their microphones so that everyone can have a great webinar experience. So. Um, for those of you who don't know who we are, uh, we're Doc365, we're a software company located out of Jacksonville, Florida. We specialize in building enterprise level SharePoint solutions for businesses in all kinds of industries. We have over 17 years of experience working with SharePoint to build powerful internet portals and other business tools, including effective contract management solutions. Uh, that said, you're not really here to talk, to hear me talk about us. Uh, so let's get on with defining what an automated contract management system is. So what exactly is one? Um, an automated contract management system is any platform that is designed to store and manage legal agreements. Um, it, it's designed, um, basically these can include your clients, your vendors, and any other parties. Often they will automate and streamline admin tasks to reduce business overheads and pro um, provide a single unified view of each contract. So now that you kind of know what that is, what exactly can it do? Well, an automated CMS can be used to manage the contract management process from the creation slash negotiation of a contract all the way to implementation. It allows you to track every step of the process and ensure that you have all the information you need at every stage of the contract life cycle. Because, uh, you know, we all know that it's impossible to make good decisions in business with, with, without having all of the data. Um, and this is especially important with your contracts where you're also having to worry about compliance, um, whether that's complying with the terms of the contract, with local governments, with all these different things. And by not having all of that information, you not only risk making bad decisions, and we'll go into how that can happen later, but also you risk opening yourselves up to different fees, fines, um, any potential lawsuits. So essentially, um, an automated CMS can really help with a lot of that, and instead of having to manually keep track of everything, um, it does a lot of the more menial tasks of that for you and keeps you alerted to anything that's going on, whether that's um, routine notifications on different stages of the contract or, you know, any weird things happening that shouldn't be happening. So uh, moving on, what features can you really expect from an automated CMS? Um, so just kind of going through the list here, uh, standardized contract processes. Um, basically what you can do is you can build these out and then deploy them without really having to have a novel approach to each contract that you're building. Um, you're also not just limited to creating one type of contract process because, you know, there's a different, there's tons of different type of contracts that you're working with. So you can set up a standardized process for, uh, working with clients, working with vendors, or working with other businesses um, in different um, forms of partnerships. Um, moving on to task automation. So this kind of goes back to standardized contract processing, but really um, you can automate a lot of the tasks that people have to do and to cut down on the menial tasks of contract management. So, you know, this can include checking up, uh, checking on the terms of the contract, remind, um, setting updates in your calendar to look over different aspects of the calendar of the contract, and it, um, whether that's you know at the midway point or whether you're deciding to renew the contract. 
um, which moves us into automated alerts. These allow you to keep track of your contracts throughout their life cycle and will notify you on any actions that you may need to take. Um, and the uh, next one's a big one. It's a central contract repository. This allows you to store all of your contracts in one place so that you can really cut down on the chance of you losing them. And we'll go into that because that might seem like it's a far out there, not a really big problem, but it's actually more common than you think it is. So moving on to multi-party collaboration. Uh, with a contract management system, you should be able to collaborate with members both in and out of your organization to create and negotiate contracts, which moves into the next feature you should expect, which is e-signature integration. Um, with e-signature integration, you won't have to wait on someone to sign the hard version of a contract. Um, instead, you can send it to them over email or you can share it with them and they should be able to sign off on it and it's good to go. Uh, Moving on to financial tracking. Uh, with this, you can see the total dollar amount of your contracts and track a lot of the financial aspects of the, of the contract management process. So this can be, like I said, your uh, like total dollar amount, or you can see the financial aspects of individual contracts, groups of contracts, types of contracts, that sort of thing. Um, next up is a search functionality. Uh, with this, you should be able to search through your contacts by tags and keywords to find the ones that you're looking for to cut down on a lot of the administrative time that is normally spent tracking down contracts, which can actually um, add up to a sizable amount over time. Um, next up is reporting in dashboards. Um, this is pretty basic. You should expect this out of any business application that you're using. Uh, this allows you to track the progress of your contracts and how they perform, where each one is at, how many are at what stage. Um, this can really help you make informed decisions about maybe any changes you need to make in your contract management process. So seeing whether or not, um, you know, how many, how many contracts are you actually closing? If this is focused on the client side of things, um, you know, how many contracts are close to renewal? How many do you need to take a look at, et cetera, et cetera. Um, secure storage. Contracts are pretty sensitive information. Uh, so you need to make sure that you're able to keep them safe from, you know, any prying third parties who you really don't want to have access to this confidential information. Um, contract and template libraries. Uh, basically, these let you save uh, templates and reuse them for different situations. So, you know, if there's no need, if you're approaching a new situation with a new client, a new contact, a new vendor, et cetera, et cetera, um, and you don't really need to do a lot of negotiation, you can just pull out a contract template, send it over to them, and save a lot of time throughout this process. And then finally, uh, you know, a good feature that you should expect is automated approval and request workflows. Basically, these make sure that each step of the contract management process flows smoothly and transitions into the next step without any big gaps or you know, issues that normally come with uh, regular contract management. So, yeah, I, I know that was a lot, but now that you know what features you should expect, from an automated CMS, um, I kind of wanted to take a look at some of the reasons why you might be able to benefit from using an automated CMS. So for example, uh, for companies that have a high contract volume, so you know they're doing really well, highly successful, uh, an automated CMS can really help you keep contracts from getting lost no matter how many you have because they're all stored within that central system that allows you to search through it. Um, there's also some companies might have struggle with wasted time throughout the contract management process. So a CMS can really streamline and automate tasks, allowing you to save time and really devote your resources to the work that isn't just administrative, that isn't just, you know, moving and getting it, moving through the different steps of the process. Um, some companies struggle with slow turnaround. Like I said, by streamlining and automating a lot of the you know, contract management processes. You can, um, you can save time and really speed up how quickly a contract is able to go live and be viable and you can get to the implementation step. Um, some companies have security concerns. Um, like I said, a CMS allows you to store your contracts securely without fear, um, especially if you're using a SharePoint-based contract management system like Doc 365s. Um, because it's SharePoint and it's stored with Microsoft in their, um, in their servers, there are a lot of different security aspects that you can add to your system 
to ensure that it's even safer, including multi-factor authentication. Um, and then finally, some companies struggle with inaccurate reporting because if they're using a manual contract management process, it can be difficult to put all of that information together in one place. So an automated CMS will compile all of your contract activities and reports that you can then view. So that really, you know, I've kind of been covering why you might need a CMS, you know, what features you should be expecting, but let's kind of take a look, let's take a step back for a second and take a look at why, you know, what, the, what are the effects of poor contract management? Because really this, you know, a lot of you are here to see what, you know, the positives that it can do for you, but a lot of times you, we don't think about the negative aspects of poor um, contract management. So for example, lost revenue. Um, companies with poor contract management lose, risk losing up to 9.2% of their revenue each year. Um, in addition to that, companies with poor contract management have a 20% lower conversion rate. And not only, so, you know, you're losing out on money, you're not converting as much, so you're not bringing in as much money. And in addition to that, um, poor contract management ca um, causes you to face increased administrative costs up to about 25 to 30% higher. So it, it makes financial sense to invest in a tool or solution that allows you to really save money. Um, but not only that, um, you know, a contract management system can really help you eliminate human error. A recent DocuSign survey found that 40% of respondents said that human error negatively affects contract management in their company. In addition to that, um, the Journal of Contract Management found that 71% of businesses can't locate 10% of their contracts. And then finally, 65% of legal professionals identify wasted time as the biggest pain point in contract management. So essentially, you going back to my point, you can't afford not to use an automated contract management system. Um, it is in your financial interest to invest in one, and while it might seem like a larger cost up front, it's a long-term benefit that can help you save a lot of money and bring in more money, essentially, over time. Um, so then, really hammering in what the benefits of an automated CMS are. Um, first of all, an automated CMS gives you a, a there's less risk to using one, and it offers you more control. It allows you to track your contract data, maintain histories and audit trails, and it allows you to control the distribution of your contract content. Um, the automated systems allow you to automate many of the manual steps of the process and eliminate unnecessary tasks that can be bogging you down and slowing down your operations. Uh, an automated CMS gives you direct content access. Um, and allows you to quickly find and access contracts, like I said, to save time. Um, and additionally, it allows you to ensure continuity. So you can cut down on processing and response times to close contract management gaps. So, you know, it saves you money, allows you to keep track of, a, of everything that you're doing, and it saves you time. Um, but not only that, it offers you secure data storage. So, you know, while you might have manual copies of your contracts, uh, like I said, those get lost. So using an automated CMS, you can keep copies of contracts and store them in a central accessible repo um, repository that then going back to the search functionality allows you to quickly find what you're looking for without having to sort through different computers, having to sort through your emails, having to sort through different files if you're storing it manually. Um, which again, data consolidation. Um, you're keeping everything in one place. And in addition to that, um, if you're using a SharePoint-based project um, content contract management system, you're able to also integrate a lot of your different business applications into your platform. So instead of having to log into multiple accounts, you can keep everything within SharePoint, meaning that you, can, you only have to use a single sign-on, um, which is much more secure than having multiple sign-ons across different accounts that, use, you know, that would probably be using the same username and the same password. Um, not only that, but an automated CMS allows you to improve communication with your contract management process. 
Um, basically, it facilitates a lot of the communication across uh, different departments and everything and allows everyone to know what's going on with the contracts, um, when different things need to happen, and you know, when something and you know, when something needs to be done and what needs to be done with it. Uh, there's no, you know, gaps in the process, like we've been saying, it just allows you to keep on top of everything and ensure that everyone knows what they're doing, which is probably the most vital part of the contract management process. If people don't know what they're doing, there's going to be mistakes, there's going to be failures, and that goes into compliance. If you are not able to ensure compliance with your contract management system, then why are you investing in it? Um, again, you're opening yourself up to lawsuits, fines, and fees, things that you should, um, that can impose a great financial risk on your company. And right now, um, when things are as uncertain as they are, you cannot afford to have any part of your contract management system leave you vulnerable to the, um, to having to pay these fines, these fees. Um, essentially, there is no downside to making the switch to an automated contract management system. Uh, it is nothing but pure benefit for you. So now that I've kind of gone over that, um, we've really taken a look at the reasons why you would want to use an automated CMS. Um, we would like to borrow a bit more of your time to go over our automated contract management system. Um, so, I may be biased, but I think that Docs 365's contract management solution is a powerful resource for companies that are looking to more effectively manage their contracts. Um, I think it looks pretty good, and we've even improved on the way that it looks uh, from when this screenshot was taken. And the best part about it is that we can also make sure that it is fully branded for your company. So instead of it saying Doc up there in the corner, um, it can have your company's logo, it can feature your company's colors, and it can be configured to look the way that you need it to for your, you know, for your business. Um, with that said, I'm going to pass things off to my colleague, Ben Senjum. So he's our enterprise sales executive. He is also a master of all of Doc's products, but specifically our contract management solution. And he'll be taking you on a tour of our tool and really exploring the different features that you can find useful um, as you improve your contract management process. Excellent. Thank you so much, Quentin, for that introduction. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. So we're gonna go on a high level overview of our contract management uh, system here and what um, automations it can provide your company. Um, you know, automation as Quentin kind of touched on is, uh, is vital as far as contract management, especially as your company begins to grow. Um, you know, you wanna make sure you're staying on top of your contracts, that you're able to shop around for, you know, maybe, uh, you know, different, different rates from vendors, uh, making sure that, um, you know, you're staying in compliance. Uh, there's all kinds of benefits to that and our contract management will provide the automation that uh, you're probably looking for um, you know i talk to companies pretty much all day every day and uh, it's pretty astounding the number of uh, companies that still use kind of spreadsheets they store you know contracts on uh, like a like on a share drive or uh, something like that and they kind of just try to stay on top of you know when the, the contracts can expire using you know maybe like outlook or something so it's uh it can be very difficult to keep up with so um, with our contract management, it's going to provide all the notifications you need and uh, automation for approvals, et cetera. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough here. This is going to be our dashboard. Um, right here in the dashboard, it's going to tell you uh, the number of contracts are expiring in a certain number of days. So in this example, this is uh, 30, 60, 90 days. You can click these buttons. It'll go right into show you those contracts that are expiring then. Uh, it's very important for these to be you know, front and center as soon as you log into your contract management. Uh, we also have, you know, data, um, all of this is customizable on our dashboard to your needs. So if there's a additional data that you'd really want to capture, we'd be able to have that for you. Um, so you can see the value of your active contracts, uh, how many active contracts you actually have, you know, which department is spending the most, uh, what, what stage your contracts in and, you know, what uh, type of contracts are out there currently. Um, so we have all these uh, reporting uh, functions that we can actually, you know, have for you here in our contract management system. 
Um, there's, it's also capable of um, doing vendor contracts, customer contracts, or customer and vendor contracts. There's all kinds of capabilities to it. But uh, today we're going to check out the, the vendor uh, contract side of it. So uh, as I click the contracts tab over here on the left-hand side, it takes us to newer uh, contracts. These are where you'll be able to see, and currently in admin view, which means I can see um, all the contracts within all the departments, um, you know, right here in this nice layout. I can easily search through contracts right here if I wanted to, um, so it quickly finds them. Um, I also have filtering capabilities over here. So if I was looking for contracts within a certain stage, um, if they're in progress, approved, rejected, contracts in a certain department, or contracts in a certain location, um, there's all kinds of filtering capabilities. Um, that I have there. Um, and also I can find, you know, contracts maybe expiring at the end of the next 100 days or something. That's kind of a handy little uh, feature there. Uh, so this will allow you to quickly find contracts that you need um, right away. And as Quentin kind of said, a lot of companies struggle to find contracts. This pretty much alleviates all of that. It's pretty much laid out here nicely for you. Um, as I go into a contract, we'll sh uh, check out see what that looks like. Um, you know, you can store the effective dates right here. Um, you can assign, you know, what type of contract it is, um, who the vendor uh, is from this contract. Um, you can have, you know, location, what department it is. You can change the active status if you'd like. Um, it also has permissions. So you can easily um, add a group of people within your company that can see this particular contract. If, they're, if this group of people, and this can be made in the settings, if this group of people isn't in here, they cannot see this contract at all. So it's great for security. And you can quickly and easily uh, configure who can see what. So it's very nice. Uh, here within the uh, owner area, you can simply add somebody's name. This means that we'll get notifications for this contract. That's that automation we we're kind of talking about. So they'll get uh, notifications when it's about to expire. Uh, during the approval process, if something needs to be looked at, they'll get notifications so they'll know how to know when to act on it. Um, as I come over here into the documents area of this contract, this is where you can literally store the, uh, the actual contract here with the signatures. Um, you know, we do have a uh, version history. So if you want to see the different versions of the contract, you could have that here. Uh, it'll show you version one, two, three, and you can see in each individual one. There's redlining capabilities. So if you're wanting to edit and go back and forth in contracts, it'll show you, you know, who edited what at this time and what they added. Um, and so we also have Adobe Sign and DocuSign integrations. So basically, I can open the SharePoint library here. So you can basically go into here and uh, select the contract. And you'll, what you'll basically do is hit you know, DocuSign, you'll hit go get signatures. It'll tell the system who it needs to go to, you'll type in their email address, it'll fire off to um, you know, maybe the vendor if they need to sign something or a customer. As soon as they sign it, it's gonna end up right back in here in the system, signed and ready to go. Um, so. It really takes that you know manual process of emailing those contracts out, you know, to vendors or customers telling them they need to sign. Uh, this will pretty much do it for you. They'll sign it. It'll pop like right back in here, and then you'll be notified when it's in here. Um, we also have templates as well. Uh, this saves time, so you can quickly select a, a contract template maybe and uh, have it here ready for you. Um, that's kind of a big thing to kind of have, so you're not having to dig around looking for the appropriate contract or document that you want to have in here, so you can just quickly uh, select it, import the document right into here. Um, as far as workflows, this is a huge uh, thing for approvals. Um, this There's a lot of time wasted emailing people back and forth. Can you review this contract? Let me know what you think. Does it need anything else? With this workflow, which can be easily generated in the settings tab over here, we can make these workflows for approval. So what will happen you know, in the first stage, uh, you can have as many stages as you want, uh, in the first stage, these would be essentially the provers in this example. It's Joe and Ben. Uh, they have until you know April 6th to you know approve the contract that I already have them, but you know hypothetically, um, they can leave notes in here if they'd like, and uh, to kind of communicate with each other. And um, as soon as they uh, go on and click either uh, approve, need more info, or reject, so if they hit uh, approve, it'll go on to the next stage. Uh, need more info, the, uh, the people, the contract owners will get notifications that something else needs to be looked at in this case it's Ben. Um, or if they reject, they'll go back to Ben as well and say, hey, uh, you know, this, this didn't look good. You know, maybe this, you can add a note if you'd like. Um, so it really automates the whole process for approvals. Um, and so you don't have to go back for the emailing. It also eliminates any, you know, room for error. 
Um, as far as notifications, uh, when we deploy the solution, we can have uh, you know automatic uh, ones for 30, 60, or 90 days, or there's custom ones you want to add. Otherwise, you know, not every contract is the same. If you want to be notified a little bit earlier, or there's some other uh, time frame you want to be notified for, if you want to be, you know, maybe it's like a lease term or something uh, for a building, you want to be able to, you know, receive a notification six months out. You can do that here. Um, you know, who should receive the notification? You can enter that here, and then what's the reason uh, that they need to look into this? So we'll receive an email notification um, that they need to look into this. Um, so that way they'll stay on top of it. Also, of course, we have notes. We want to keep that in here. We have a renewal as well. What that's going to do is take all that information uh, from the contract details and plug it in. You can add new dates to it. So that way you don't have to recreate the whole um, contract. It's kind of uh, taking all the information, automating the whole uh, process for you. Of course, history here, if you wanted to recount something that might have happened or something that somebody had done in the contract, you can easily see that right here as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the vendor area, kind of similar concept here as the contracts. Of course, we have filtering capabilities if you're looking for you know, uh, vendors in a certain area or maybe a type of vendor that they might be, so a type of service, you can do that. Um, and then also, of course, we have the searching function here as well to easily uh, find, a, uh, find a vendor there pretty easily. Um, so I'll go into a vendor so we can kind of see what that looks like. You can capture all the details, phone number, email address, who the, uh, the vendor owners might be. Uh, purpose of this, they get notifications. Um, so, um, you know, here, for example, in the documents area, you can store things in here like the insurance document. So that way, you know, when their insurance document is going to expire, you know that they might need a new one. Um, so they'll get notification um, that that's getting ready to expire. Um, so if you wanted to um, edit this, um, you know, uh, maybe it needs to be, uh, notification needs to be given then and you know that's when it's going to expire you can save that um, and then you can also see the contacts in here um, and then see all the contracts associated with that vendor on the topic of automation you know sometimes automation just means that you know you're not physically you know doing the work and everything so we actually have what's called you know our vendor portal where it's an external site where um, you can provide access to one of your vendors or your customers where they can actually see documents that you provide to them. Uh, they can also upload documents, which will uh, come here in the system. They can fill out questionnaires um, and uh, uh, quite a few other features actually. So as soon as you uh, provide their email address right here, um, you'll hit the send uh, vendor invitation. And what that'll do is it'll send uh, the vendor, in this case, a uh, login so they can access that external site. Um, so if I go in here in documents, um, we have the ability to make documents visible to that uh, third party. So now this document, which is secure in Office 365, uh, is visible to them through an external portal. So we can save that and then it would appear in our external portal. Um, you can also have them fill out questionnaires. Um, we have questionnaire templates that you can generate, uh, but if you wanted to you know, add a questionnaire that you've already made, you simply just click that and then you gotta tell them when it might be due by. So you'd save that, and now the vendor uh, you know, receives a notification that, hey, they need to fill out this questionnaire on their external site. Um, so I'll jump into that really quick. This is the an example of the external portal. This is where the vendor might log into <clears throat> to kind of see um, you know, documents that might be expiring, pending questions from you, um, all their details. They can fill out their vendor profile so you don't have to. Um, so they can fill out the vendor you know, details. So that way you don't have to manually do it yourself. Um, in the documents area, this is where they'll be able to view um, all documents. So if they wanted to add a, add a document, they simply just click this. It would write into your system. Uh, questionnaires. Um, so they can come in here, fill out questionnaires. They can answer the questions for themselves. They can, you know, you know, and based on the questions they answer, they can upload certain documents. Um, all kinds of capabilities. They can save as draft if they're not ready to send it. Uh, otherwise, if when they submit it, They'll go right into their area here within the uh, contract management. Um, so that provides automation. So it's basically handing off all that uh, work to basically you know the customer, so they can kind of you know fill out the profiles, answer any questions, and it's all it's all automated, so you don't have to do it. Um, also, we have scorecard capabilities. Um, you know, of course, this is important for making sure that you're kind of dealing with the best vendors and making sure that they're kind of holding up their end of the bargain, if you will, on delivery times and price and everything else. Um, so 
here you can actually uh, see all of the uh, scorecards where you'll be grading the vendor. They can be done quarterly, they can do, be done you know, semi-annually or annually, and you can generate these scorecards yourself, but um, show you an example of what a scorecard actually looks like in our system here. So this is an example of what the scorecard looks like. Um, so you can, um, you know, it can be reviewed on financial performance, relationship. Um, it gives them a total score here. Uh, you give them a star rating, um, and it gives the averages that can be weighted. Uh, also, you can, you know, handwrite in notes over here on the, on the side as well. So you know, um, for pricing, it says two to three times didn't deliver on scheduled date range. Um, so you can add notes in here, and then what you can do is actually utilize this to compare. Um, you know, year over year, if you'd like. And so if you go to history, you can see how they're actually doing. So this is the current score, and this is how things have changed, and it gives you year over year what they've done. So you can kind of keep on track. You know, this particular vendor, they've, you know, like price has gone up a little bit, it looks like, or uh, their overall rating has decreased 0.5 uh, points. So a great way to be able to, you know, stay on top of your vendors um, as well. Uh, we'll have reporting capabilities. That's always important, of course. We have our CAN reporting uh, functionality here. Um, so if you wanted to have you know, something on scorecard or if you're looking for maybe like the best um, uh, vendor for asset management, you could you know, do that and see who has the best score. Um, that's something you can do. There's expiring uh, reports. All of these reports can be exported to CSV or Excel. We also have Power BI capabilities. We can link out you know, Power BI reports for you uh, during deployment as well. And in the settings tab, it gives you kind of the autonomy to be able to control a lot of the, uh, the parts in here. So what you want to display, you may have the contract types, locations. You can generate questionnaires in here, generate scorecards. Uh, you can generate the workflows that we talked about for approval um, very easily, actually, the permission groups. So all kinds of settings. So um, don't want to go too far into it. Um, if you would like to book a demo and discuss some of the customizations that we might be able to do for you, be happy to discuss. You can log on to mydoc365.com, book a demo that way, or you can simply email me at ben at mydoc365.com. Uh, so without uh, further ado, I'll go ahead and uh, hand it over to Quentin to go ahead and uh, wrap everything up. Thanks so much for your time. All right. So thank you for that, Ben. Um, I think that about wraps everything up. Um, that should be a, a, uh, everything that we're going to be talking about today. I'd like to thank all of you for coming out to this webinar. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about Doc's contract management system or any of our other SharePoint productivity solutions, uh, feel free to reach out to Ben and schedule a time to talk with him. He'd love to answer any questions that you may have and further explore the um, different ways that our CMS can benefit you. So thank you very much and have a great day.